welcome. This is going to be a mini lesson on the levels of organization uh, within ecology. Now, uh, we can approach this from two main perspectives. One, we can approach, approach it from the biological perspective, where we're dealing with only the living things, uh, from the smallest living thing or the uh, piece of living things, the cell, and work our way up to uh, the largest uh, group. Or we can start from the very beginning, even before uh, we call it living, and uh, where living things are created, and work our way up bigger from there. Today we are going to start with that second uh, perspective from the very beginning. So before we get going, you should have this note sheet taped into your notebook. Um, if you didn't, did not get a note a sheet from your teacher, please uh, go ahead and draw this into your notebook or uh, find this on um, our website and uh, print it off and put it in your notebook. In either case, uh, we'll be taking notes right on the circles uh, the smallest level of organization in the smallest circle all the way to the largest one which will actually be outside the circle at the very end of it. Uh, you can take notes within the circle, you can draw pictures, uh, whatever it takes for you to, under, uh, to get the information uh, so that you understand it um, about that particular level of organization. You can see the, the trend um, as we work uh, from smallest to biggest. So as we start at the very beginning, we understand that um, all living things are made of matter and matter is made of, of, of atoms. And you can see some pictures of common atoms that we see in living things. As a matter of fact, we talked about um, atoms in one of our previous videos and the idea of being organic is based around the atom of carbon. Uh, so you'll see carbon there as being one of the real big atoms that we talk a lot about in uh, in living things as well as oxygen and hydrogen. Um, an atom is built up of a, a nucleus made up of protons and neutrons and the uh, outer orbitals are made up of electrons and that's where all the bonding happens uh, between atoms. So that is our first level of organization in this perspective. Uh, the next level is going to be molecules. This is where we take atoms and atom with other atoms and they bond together uh, to form a new substance and here on the screen you can see some examples you know it could be a really large molecule like octane or caffeine where we have lots of atoms lots of different types of atoms put together to create a new substance or maybe as simple as atmospheric nitrogen which is just two atoms of nitrogen either case all of these are bigger than just one atom as we get bigger in the levels, uh, you can see that the, the things we talk about are going to be combinations of those levels below it. And macromolecule is really doing the same thing. Uh, the two pictures show uh, here's a, a molecule that should be familiar from the last screen. It was glucose. And we've taken a bunch of glucoses and combined them together to form a long chain, a bigger molecule, this macro idea. We've taken a whole bunch of these and we've put them together to give us a bigger and longer chain. Yeah. Um, so you'll see macromolecules be our next level. Some examples of macromolecules that you'll run into that fit into this level. DNA, sugar, lipid, protein, enzymes, and of course, this molecule right here, which is starch. The next level is the cell. So we finally get to the basic building block of living things. So far we've dealt with matter. So we take these macromolecules and we use them to build a cell. And the cell is made up of uh, some macromolecules. For instance, uh, the outer part of this cell we call the membrane is made up of, of uh, lipid. Uh, we use proteins and carbohydrates to, to build uh, the other uh, internal parts of a cell. So um, we're taking the macromolecules, which were built from the molecule, which were built from the atoms, and now we put them together into the basic unit of living things called the cell. And you can see some cool pictures here of some cells. All right, ultimately the next level is going to be called organism, which is the bottom left-hand side of the screen here. Um, the organism called the autumn blaze maple or the monarch or the uh, bacteria. Um, but the bacteria, because it's a, a, a single cell, that's the only only makeup of that organism. However, these other two are multi-celled organisms, and there are some levels that we have to include in this level that gets us to the overall organism. 
Um, if we have a multi-celled organism, we start with a groups of cells that hold the same function, which we call a tissue. You can see uh, four examples of tissues, uh, nervous tissue, all those cells are put together to, to have the function of communication and sending signals. When we put um, a group of tissues together for a specific function, we, get, we call them organs. And this is your liver uh, or a leaf. Um, we get multiple tissues put together to, to serve a function for the overall organism. If we have a group of organs put together uh, to serve a purpose or to have a function within an organism, we call them a system. And then finally, we get a bunch of systems together uh, to function together, and we get that to be an organism. All right, so now we're, we have all these organisms. The next level up takes organisms that look alike and are able to breed with one another and, and have viable offspring, and they're going to group to get those together. So we're going to take and, and make that our next level, and we're going to call that species. Uh, species sounds like specific. It's specific types of organisms. Um, so here on the left-hand side is a maple tree, uh, specifically the autumn blaze maple tree. And you can see that we uh, it's a specific kind of, of organism on Earth. It uh, looks like this. It can only breed with other autumn uh, blaze maples. And here's uh, a name we even give it in science to show that it's very specific. It's a lot like your name. It's very specific. Here's a white-tailed deer. Again, same idea. It's a uh, species, um, and you can see uh, the name underneath it. And when you have species uh, living together with the same species in the same area, that's where we get populations. Again, on the left hand side, you see our, our maple trees from the previous level. Uh, now we have a whole bunch living together. This would be a population of maple trees, and here is the same thing with um, these deer, same species living together in the same area. The next level up is going to be community and communities are just areas where we have multiple populations living together. Um, so a population here on the screen is our deer living together with our maple trees and other types of trees, grasses, um, other forms of vegetation. I'm sure there's other animals in the in the picture that we can't see. So it's populations living with other populations in the same basic area. Now, ecosystem is a little different as we move up the, the level. Uh, ecosystem now throws in some abiotic factors as well as some uh, as the biotic factors. So, ecosystems would be a community now that would include the uh, non-living parts of it as well and how they all go together. Um, specifically here in the picture, you see the, the bear uh, with its community. Um, the type of water there, how cold it is, what temperature it might be, how much sunlight they get, uh, the seasons that might be there, that would be uh, the type of ecosystem that is there. And you can see that's different from the one uh, with uh, the snake in it as well. Uh, the, the ecosystem is different uh, based on some of its non-living uh, parts of its environment or the abiotic parts of its environment. And the next biggest one is going to be biomes. And biomes you can see the map on the on the screen right now it has to do with uh, geographical location of, of certain ecosystems that are clumped together and uh, we make them into big categories um, such as the tundra and the tundra is in dark green you can see that uh, what you might find in the tundra uh, very cold permafrost uh, it's very um, much due to where on earth it is um, the all those individual ecosystems in that area um, because they share the same climate uh, the same place on earth um, they um, what we call that a biome and we'll, i'll give you another example of one here is the uh, taiga um, you'll find this in canada there's a picture of that and you can see that uh, moose and uh, evergreen trees and whatever else is in that picture um, of course, we'll see that during in the probably the summer months. Again, it has two main seasons uh, based on geography. And here's another one uh, is the temperate grasslands, which we see 
um, in southern parts of Minnesota, some t- a little bit out uh, western part of Minnesota, but definitely in the what we call the breadbasket of the United States, which is you know Kansas, Nebraska, uh, Oklahoma. And finally, we reached the end. The biggest group, obviously, is what encompasses all the rest of the groups, and that's going to be called the biosphere. Uh, the biosphere is Earth, but not the complete Earth. It's the the layer of Earth where all living things um, seem to exist. You can see in the the, the pullout picture, it's this area right here. You know, wherever living things stop existing, is the bottom part of the biosphere, and the upper part where living things stop existing is the upper part of the biosphere. But it's that layer of Earth um, that uh, contains all the living things, and so it includes all the rest of the levels. And that's why on your notes you'll see um, uh, from smallest to largest that the the biosphere kind of encompasses the entire picture um, because it uh, is that layer where all the rest of the stuff is found. All right, as we bring this video to a conclusion, um, and again, we're talking about the levels of organization. This is a great picture to wrap it up. As we talked about originally, how do we get matter? Matter leading into the cell, cells leading into species, uh, which are groups of specific organisms on Earth. As they get grouped together into populations, into communities, into ecosystems, biomes, and finally, you know, realizing that this there's a, a layer on Earth that contains all the living things, and it doesn't range outside of that little layer, which we call the biosphere. In any case, uh, you can see how it builds and, and stacks together, and that's uh, what we call the levels of ecological organization.